Time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Throughout the world, only one company produces all types of business machines and systems, Remington Rand, who now invites you to play What's My Line? Now well, let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular star of television and the theater, Miss Arlene Francis. And the next gentleman you're about to meet has the distinction of having published probably the most fascinating novel of the year, 10 Frederick Street by John O'Hara, Mr. Bennett Cerf. time because I now have the privilege of the first time of introducing one of the smartest and nicest girls in journalism and television, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And now I would like to announce that the management at great expense has secured a special panelist for us tonight, the unique, the extraordinary the bizarre Fred Allen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, statistics prove that the average male baby only requires one babysitter to keep him company. But when that baby grows up and becomes John Daly, he requires four sitters. <laughs> and now that the four sitters are here, may I present the, ba the former baby who has grown up to become our moderator, Mr. John Daly. Well, <clears throat> good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to What's My Line. I think you're all familiar with what we're about to do. We've got some interesting occupations which we think will puzzle our panel, some nice people who brought the occupations. We'll have a famous guest challenger a bit later on, but right now I think we ought to get things rolling. It's time for the experts to meet the first challenger whose line has to be spotted. So would you come out and sign in, please? Edmund. Edmund Bauman, is that right? Oh. <laughs> and where are you from, sir? Well, I've uh, lived a long time in Philadelphia. Philadelphia? Well, it's a lovely town. It's nice to have people who are that close on as neighbors come up here and give our panel, panel a rough time. Uh, we like to give them a little bit of a running start. Would you take mm -hmm. a small running start and let them get a closer look at you, please? All right, sir, right over here and sit down next to me, if you will. Are you familiar with our scoring system? Yes. Well, if you're familiar with the scoring system, there's nothing left to do but to uh, tell the folks at home, our friends here, exactly what your line is. Set then, our guest is uh, salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Mr. Bowman, do you work for a profit-making organization? No. That's what I figured. I asked it the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Bowman, do you Bowman, do you work for the United States government in any capacity? Yes. Is it uh, anything to do? Has it anything to do with the law? Yes. Is it some div special division devoted to preserving the laws of the country? Yes. It isn't the FBI, is it? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you have anything to do with the executive branch of the government? Yes. Do you have anything to do with our president? Yes. Are you a Secret Service man? Yes. Wait a minute. That's a good running start, Miss Darcy. But you mean there's going. more? 
Your well, Honor. are you a Secret Service man engaged in protecting the President Gettysburg. at Gettysburg or the White House or wherever at, he may be? At, <laughs> quiet, girl. On the golf course. Uh, the question was, are you engaged in... Pre well, I think, actually, we probably have to throw in the sponge because when you get down to bedrock, Mr. Bauman is always concerned with protecting the security of the President of the United States because he is the chief of the United States Secret Service. Oh. Yes, Mr. Allen. Do you think that, I want to ask Mr. Bowman, do you think that the president is giving the country another Gettysburg address? <laughs> oh, no. Well, I'm sitting in Bennett's place, John. That's the best I can do. Mr. Bowman, could I ask a serious question? I think we'd all like to know just what is the relationship between the Secret Service and the FBI? The Secret Service Division is a unit or agency of the Treasury Department. The FBI is in the Department of Justice. They're two separate agencies. But more or less interlocked, don't they? Do some, somewhat the Yes, same we work? cooperate and exchange information, but the Secret Service, we have specific duties like uh, protection of the president, suppression of counterfeiting, and forgery of government checks. And the FBI has certain duties under their jurisdiction, too. Yes, Miss Arthur. You're older than the FBI, aren't you? Yes, we, we were organized in 1865. You, Thank the, you. The Secret Service was organized then. You weren't organized then. Well, Bennett has had more experience with the law, I think, than any of us. That's probably why. <laughs> <laughs> Bennett just wants to know his rights, Mr. Bowman, so that if he's picked up by one of your men, I must say it's a very fine core. If I can add a small bit, I covered the White House for a good many years, as I think you know, sir, and I don't know a finer body of men than the detail that you have at the White House. Jim Rowley on all the way down. Thank you. <laughs> now... I must tell, I think the panel will get a kick out of this. Actually, we put great pressure on Mr. Bauman to come on this week, even though I think it was some inconvenience for him, because by next week, his, he and nine other Americans who well deserve it uh, will have their pictures and a story in Look Magazine. We were afraid you'd see it, because he is one of the ten Americans who is going to receive at the first annual, I don't know whether you know about this, do you? Yes, first sir. annual Korea Service Award that is given by the Civil Service um, League in Washington next Saturday night. And they called me and asked me to come down and preside at the dinner. I couldn't do it. But Mr. Bauman, next week would be so hot, but you got him anyway, very quickly. Yes, sir. Then the least you can do is flip all the cards. No question about it. We flipped <laughs> all the cards, and thanks very much, much for coming. Will you say hello to the panel? And I know Very nice having so fine a civil servant with us, and uh, compliments to the panel on a very good beginning, Mr. Allen. I thought the Secret Service was what went on in the automat, where you don't see anybody and things are going on. <laughs> it was news to me, I must it's say. News that. to you, yeah, sir. All right. Well, let's see what you can do with another challenger now, Fred. Will you sign in, please, sir? I can't sir? guess him from here, even. <laughs> <laughs> Mike. Mike Bizick, is that right, sir? Yeah. Mr. Bizick, where are you from? I live in RD3, Strictly, Pennsylvania. Yeah. <laughs> the whole town is here tonight. You have friends. What town is that in here? Where would you tell us the town again? R? RD3, Swickley, Pennsylvania. RD3, that's Rural, Rural Delivery Route Delivery. 3 in Swick Swick Swickley, Pennsylvania. Fine. The panel would like a chance to get a better look at you. Would you mind very much taking a small hike for me? Hi, how are you? Good. Hi, how are you? It's right near Pittsburgh, isn't it? Hi. All right, Mr. Bizzik, too. right here, if you will, and sit down next to me. And I would ask you first, you know our uh, scoring system here. Are you familiar with it, how we score? Yes, Good, then let's let the folks at home and our friends in the theater know exactly what <laughs> your line is. Mr. Bizick is salaried, and with that, let's begin the general questioning with, uh, all right, Fred. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bizick, the people laugh when uh, your profession was exposed to them. Is it something funny that you do? do is it funny to you as you're doing it? At times. <laughs> Just at times, huh? Do you deal in services? Do you deal in services? Yes. 
Uh, are your services available for all people, men and for women both? Yes. They are. Uh, do these people who require your services, you look a little heavy. I, I imagine these people come to you to, uh, to avail themselves of your uh, services, do they? I go to them, too. Well, you're, 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 you're giving them too much help, Mike, if I may call you, he Mike. He goes to them, too. The answer would be sometimes, both ways. If it's yes. downhill. Yes, sir. Uh, is it, <laughs> do you work in an office of some sort? You have no office. Not, no office. He does not work in an office. One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Is there any product associated with what you do, Mr. Bezik? No. There is Sorry not a product as, as we, uh, use the term of reference here. There is no packaged entity that comes out as an end result of the services which are supplied. So that'd Thank be you, two John. down Thank you. and eight to go, Mr. Sir. <clears throat> Mr. Bezik looks a lot. If he isn't too busy to answer this, a lot oh, like a no. a lot like a traffic cop that once pinched me for speeding. Have you got anything to do with the law at all, Mr. Busy? Too little. Are you connected in any way with the Pittsburgh or suburban police force? No. No, <laughs> no I don't think so. <laughs> Three down and seven to go, Miss Gilgal. But you're connected with the law, or the law enters into what you do? There is an element of law involved in what he does, yeah. Uh, do you have to have a license to do what you do? No, you mean get a license from the state as you would well, if you were going to practice podiatry? Some sort of permission? Well, no, I, not, not license as we know it. That's right. four down and six yeah. to go, Mr. Allen. But he doesn't <coughs> work through some, uh, some branch of the, uh, of the police or through some a branch of the... Uh, no, actually, the ele there is an element of law involved. He would not be described as a policeman, which is, I think, what Mr... <coughs> well, is, <coughs> is there any paperwork in involved in what you do? Is there any paperwork involved in it? Oh, a little. Do you yeah. give papers to people? No. Do they give papers to... Well, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Something must go on when you see the people, I'm sure. <laughs> Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Well, may we assume that you do work for a nonprofit making organization, Mr. Bizzik? And if you're making yeah. money, yeah. the government will, you will hear from them. They should know about <laughs> it, too. Yeah. Uh, do you deal with people? Yes, sometimes. Do you ever deal with animals? Well, yes. Yes. You do? Do you catch any that go astray? Are you a uh, dog catcher or cat That's right. <laughs> Actually, uh, I would... Uh, he has one of his dogs with him? <laughs> Talk about catching dogs. One township, two townships, <laughs> three townships, four townships, five townships. There's some more here. Mr. Bizzik actually is a dog catcher for his town, dog catcher for six other towns, and for a borough, right? And that's a lot of power, and there's a certain... Well, How does he catch well, them? Does he overtake them? Or? Officially. What are those? What are those things in your pocket? Those, those are his commissions. Those are my commissions and credentials to say that I am... Well, the dogs the can't dog read them. How do they know that you're... <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Mr. Bishop. You might be taking out the wrong dog. <laughs> very nice to have had you on West Mile. <laughs> And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which my friends on the panel are blindfolded, and the blowing blind blah, 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 blah. Well, are the maskings over your eyes all in place, panel? Yes, yes, indeed. I think one of them is in your mouth, John. <laughs> <laughs> Good, when you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please. of our mystery challenge you we go to a different form of questioning you ask one question at a time in turn moving clockwise and we will begin it all with uh dorothy kilgallen are you in show business uh, yes mum mr allen are you a male performer <laughs> it sounded like the velvet fog but i didn't <laughs> i mean you are a man <laughs> 
I can't tell. I feel like the Hathaway shirt man multiplied by two here. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look like that Hathaway shirt man. Are you a man. performer? Yes, I think I'm a performer. Yes, thank you very much. Right. All right, Miss Francis? Uh, he is male, uh, Fred. Uh, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, you a comedian? Uh, I used to be a comedian. I'd, I'd like to be again sometime now. But just so that you don't get misled anywhere, that'll be one down and nine to go, Mr. Surf. Uh, were you involved in any way in either the Macy, the Bamberger, or the J.O. Hudson Thanksgiving Day parade? The what? There, there were a lot of stage people in those three parades. Oh, man, now I don't think I'd even heard about that, no. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are you more movies than Broadway theater? Well, now, that's a matter of, uh, that's a matter of the mind now. Uh, well, what I'd does say, your mind say? Hey, I, I, I'd like to say that I'm more Broadway, but uh, maybe I'm more movies. I don't... Uh, I would think on the matter of um, volume, we would say definitely it's movies, Miss Kilgallen. Mr. Allen? Are you in a movie that's currently playing in New York? Well, now, that's a pretty good assumption now, Mr. Allen. Thank I you. hope you are. Yes, he is, Mr. Allen. Miss Francis? Uh, have you appeared in television? Am I what now? Television. <laughs> Vous comprenez? Have you appeared in television? Mm, no, no, no. It's a little thing that comes out on a screen. <laughs> <clears throat> no, I don't do very much television. That's no. three down and seven to go, Mr. Sirs. Is the movie that you're appearing in currently appearing in a first-run house on or near Broadway? Yes, it is. Miss Kilgallen? Are you a leading man rather than a character man? Well, now, there are times when I've been a leading man and there are times when I've been not a leading man. <laughs> and uh, that is a very fair answer. <laughs> is the picture Guys and Dolls? No, but I wish... <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could make that much money, no. <laughs> Miss Francis. The fact that you're using an Irish dialect has absolutely nothing to do with who you really are, does it? Well, I've done a lot of Irish plays. But you're not Irish is what I mean. Are you? I have a brother-in-law that's Irish. <laughs> <laughs> that answers your question, Miss Arley, Mr. Sir. Very helpful. Is the picture that you're in called The Tender Trap? Oh, we're staying so close to guys and dollars now, aren't we? <laughs> That's five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you do anything besides act, such as sing or play a musical instrument? I sing a lot, but no one cares to hear me. Six down and four to go, Mr. Allen. Are you in a play that's currently in New York? Uh, no, I'm not. Seven down and three to go, Miss Francis. Are you associated with one studio in particular as opposed to being a freelance player? Do you mean the actor's studio or a Hollywood studio? <laughs> Is it? <laughs> no. Uh, no, I'm not associated with any studio. Mr. Seth? Is the picture you're in, I, I'm sorry to keep on this, <laughs> but we will locate him some way. Is it a picture that is a takeoff or a, a satire on Hollywood life? Well, no, I don't know if it's a satire or if it's the <laughs> truth or not. Well, I think we would have to give him a yes on that, sir. Miss Kilgallen? Satire on Hollywood life. Well, uh, are you Jack Palance? Yes! of the Broadway thing, there are two pictures, and it's a rather strange thing, I think, isn't it, Jack? Two of Jack's pictures are currently on Broadway, one within a block of the other. The, um, uh, one, the big knife the, and I died a thousand uh, times. As a matter of fact, the houses were adjacent, but one has, um, has one moved. has been cremated recently, and it has gone <laughs> into the intervals. Uh, In I died a thousand times, it's gone. Yeah. Now, there's one thing I wanted to ask Jack to do, because the last time I saw him, I remember very briefly, he said something about the way his name is pronounced. Now, how do you prefer to have your name pronounced, and how is it too often mispronounced? Mm. Actually, my name is Vladimir Palahniuk. But <laughs> oh, well, why didn't pronounce you tell Palance. me? <laughs> but I pronounce it uh, Jack Palance. Palance. Mm -hmm. How did you happen to pick that name? Jack Palance? Yeah. Oh, it was sort of one of those things, Palahniuk, uh, nobody could pronounce it. They said, um, well, we'll call you Palansky, and from Palansky I took Palance. But the name is what Palahniuk. What is the origin of Palahniuk? It's, I think that's uh, easier, really. 
Australia? Australia? Yes, Mr. Allen. Mr. Talents looks so tough in the pictures. Are you really as tough as you are in the pictures? Fred, I'm just murder. I'm really murder. <laughs> Go on over and murder him, Jack, will you? Thanks very much for being with us. All righty, panel. We've got time, I think, to take on another bit of exercise for you. Would you sign in, please, ma'am? Be our next challenger. Louise. Engel K, is that right? <laughs> is it Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. 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 Engel K. Will right. you look at the panel? I've always wanted me. Well, you just look at them. That's almost too much. You come with me if you want, because we're a little short of time. So that we'll dispense with the walk down. Are you familiar with the way we score this program? I am. Well, if you are, then let's let the folks at home and our friends here in the theater know exactly what your line is. All right. Mrs. Engel K is salaried, and let's begin the general questions with Mr. Sir. Mrs. Engel K, I don't think you said where you were from, did you? Astoria, Long Island. Well, that helps a lot. <laughs> <laughs> is there a product connected with what you do, Mrs. Engel? There is. Is it a product that could be used by both sexes? Yes. Is it, pro is it a product that is or has ever been alive? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's one down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is it found in the home? I beg your pardon? Is the product found in the home? Could be. Could it be found outside the home, too? Yes. Could children use it? Um, Sometimes. They could. Mm -hmm. Is it something that makes people happier? I believe it does. Is it consumed? <laughs> Hardly. <laughs> no, that's two down and eight to go, Miss. Beg pardon? I didn't mean necessarily eaten. I just no, meant I know consumed. what you meant. It still isn't here. Okay. All right. Uh, two down and eight to go, Mr. Allen. Well, you can consume it by pouring acid on it. I mean, you don't have to... Oh, we could, we could get rid of it if we had to, yeah. Is it is, is something that's not edible? No. That, is yes, it, it is something that's not edible, no. Is it sold in a specific uh, sort of store? Not mm. necessarily. No. Sell it on the not street specific. to you? Mm -mm. No, that's three down and seven to go, Miss Francis, and only two minutes to go. Is it solid rather than liquid? Yes. <clears throat> Uh, is it uh, made of metal in any part of it? No. That's four down and six to go, Mr. Seth. Mrs. Engelcake, is, would this be considered an article of apparel? Uh, an article of apparel. I don't think we could consider no, it an sir. article of apparel. No, well, that's five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Would I be likely to have one of these things? <laughs> you could. You might. It's, you know, it's possible that you might. We won't guarantee that you do have it. Rather than a luxury. Mm, I'm afraid we would have to say, even though it's a hard thing to have to say, that this would be considered a luxury. It is not necessary to sustain ordinary life. John, you know? I didn't ask if it was a necessity. I don't want to argue, but I just said useful. All right, then we'll let you. It is useful. <laughs> One minute ago, you can see. Is it, it smaller than a bread box? Smaller than a bread box. Yes, yes. it is. Is it uh, as small as a box that a diamond necklace would come in? Mm, well, well I, how, how many diamond necklaces? No, I don't think so. That's six down and four to go, Mr. Allen. Has it been established that it's ornamental? No. No, it hasn't. Would you like to ask that question? Uh, yes, I would. Yes. yes. It is it ornamental? Is. Yes. Is it in the jewelry family? The jewelry family. <laughs> no. That's seven down no. and three to go. And actually, Miss Francis, one Christmas. question. I just wanted to ask, yes, that's what I did. Does it have anything to do with anything that grows? No, I don't know. Uh, well, in a way, still, well, other yes, things grow. and May. still no. I because know. I don't know whether we could say this really has to do with something that grows, because Mrs. Engel K makes Santa Claus beards and mustaches. They grow like mad! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. Nice to have you here. We'll be back in just a moment. So now until next week, this is John Daly saying goodnight, Charlene. Nice to have you say goodnight to me, John. Good night. Good night, and don't forget to get measured for your beard, Bennett. Yeah. <laughs>
Uh, I'd like to get in on a commercial. I bet as fast as Mrs. Engel K grows those beards, Remington Rand shaves them off. <laughs> good night, Dorothy. <laughs> good night, Fred. Uh, good night, Dorothy. And, John, if you're dismissing the sitters, we'll go along and say good night. <laughs> Dismissed, Fred. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Life. Thank <laughs> you.